Would you like me to lie to you? You would? Then I love Christmas. But seriously, I'm, I'm not a fan of Christmas. I don't really celebrate any particular winter holiday, but this year my brain asked, can we make Christmas plants creepy? And I said, yes. So let's paint some poinsettias, or as my husband calls them, poinsettias. We fuss about this all the time, the phonetics of how you're supposed to say this flower. Which camp are you in? Put it down in the comments below. Around this time of year, there are three major colors that I've noticed that show up in the shops. They are the red, pink, and white. And because I want to make myself crazy, I decided to do all three for this design. Now, I won't make them photorealistic as that's not really what I was going for, but I do think they're going to be spectacular. They will have little individual things that make them different from each other. Particularly if you look at the teeth of each of these designs, you'll notice that they're slightly different. I wanted them to still work together, but seem like they're different types of the same plant. So I actually don't like going outside much, and I don't actually like plants. <laughs> Which is funny, because uh, growing up, my father always had these large uh, vegetable gardens that we did. I actually do have two large inspirations for these flowers specifically. One is the anime Yu Yu Hakusho. This is a long time obsession. <laughs> and I originally dropped into this particular story during what's called the Spirit Beast arc. It was during the very first battle with Genbu, who is a stone beast monster, and Kurama, who is the human version of this fox spirit creature, was battling him and he used this rose as his whip. And I remember thinking, huh, what other sorts of things do you do with plants? Because <laughs> up until that point, I'd never really considered making plants a weapon because like I said, I don't really like plants. <laughs> I'm allergic to most of the ones outside that are grasses. So I wasn't, I hadn't really considered it much. Only once I watched up to the Dark Tournament arc did my brain explode. Because in the final battle, Kurama versus Karasu, he turns into his demon fox form, as they called it, or spirit fox and whips out some monster plants. I think my brain exploded that day because, oh my god, those were everyday plants, but they had mouths and teeth and they moved and that, that was just the neatest thing ever. The second inspiration was a Russian artist who goes by the name of Bora Panda. They make beautiful sculptures of flowers, but not just any flowers. These are monster flowers with fangs and eyes, and sometimes it looks like they're jeweled. And they're almost seductive because they're just so striking. I remember reading in one of the descriptions that it was actually a pin that someone could wear, and I still think that's way cool. They're just, it was just very beautiful 3D artwork. These two inspirations combined in my head while I was working one night and my brain was like, we need to paint monster plants. We just need to do this. I began to do a little bit of research. I found out what types of plants are considered the holiday plants for the winter, going off of mostly Christmas and Yule in particular. So I do actually have other designs that I made that I did not record the painting of. <laughs> I have holly, mistletoe, and yew. And then there are these poinsettias. While I was painting these, my mind became wandering. And I, I, like many artists, love to imagine where these sorts of plants or whatever I'm doing, where it comes from, what's its backstory. And in my mind, these flowers are grown by some supernatural gardener who is immune to flower bites and poisons. And I think, at least for this 
particular set of flowers. The lighter the poinsettia, the more intense the poison is, and the brighter and more vivid the color, the worse the bite is. You know. Of course, I wonder now, what does that poison do? Is it hallucinogenic? Is it acidic? I don't know. I also like to wonder about how do they start, because I'm actually really bad at growing plants. Partially because, again, I'm allergic, but I know that all plants start out different. So I kind of wonder, how do they start out? How do they behave? Like, if you manage to grow them, because it would not be me who would grow them. <laughs> Maybe they start out small and look like regular poinsettias. They've got little bites. And the bites are painful, but they don't really do anything. You know, kind of like how little spider bites don't really do anything to, to humans. But then, as they get bigger, maybe they're able to move. And they... Maybe as they get bigger, they're able to move. And their bites become deadly. And they become acidic or hallucinogenic, however you want to put it. It, it would definitely give a new appreciation for the whole catch your nose thing, so don't smell them. <laughs> they might take it off. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I just enjoy thinking of pieces of the stories where these come from. And that's part of the beauty of illustration. You can always find a new story that matches your artwork. While these were originally designed for the Christmas holiday, I think because of their creepy nature, you could, you could probably put them on things any time of the year. I hope that you'll forgive some of the weird lighting and camera angles. I am experimenting with a new camera. New cameras are not my specialty at all. I'm learning a whole lot about distance and angle and, and lighting. Not to mention all the color correction. This, this video has been a nightmare to edit and that's part of the reason this took so long to get up because I don't think my computer can handle it. <laughs> so as I finish this up, I want to encourage you to take a look on Etsy for these stickers. I think they're a lot of fun and can brighten up a monster lover's room. I also want you to know that you can find me on Patreon, Society6, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for all of your support, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.